Good morning, Rising Star. And good morning to those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live. We welcome you. And as we begin to uh, begin with our intercessory prayer, if you have a prayer request online, if you would put it in the comments, our prayer team will diligently pray for those requests during the week. If we all could go to the throne of grace. Lord, your word says, but as for me, I will come into your house and the multitude of your mercy I feel and in fear, Lord, I will worship toward your holy temple. Lord, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And precious Father, before I begin to make these intercessions before your throne, Lord, I just got a praise in my spirit. Precious Father, I just want to say thank you. Because when I think about your goodness to us, to the saints, to all that you've done, oh God, I just want to say thank you. Lord, we shout hallelujah. Because, Lord, you were a very present help with our brother Bob, and we want to declare that to you this morning, Lord. We thank you, oh God. Lord, I want to thank you. Because last Sunday I saw Brother Rosenblatt, oh God. And Lord, you keep letting me know, you keep letting us know, oh God, that there is nothing too hard for you. Precious Father, I want to say thank you. I thank you for our favorable report for Sister Corals, oh God. Precious Father, I want to say thank you. Lord, I don't know if people know, but we got two new babies that were born this week. I want to thank you for Courtney and her baby boy and bringing him safely into the world, Lord. I want to thank you for Miracle Robinson and the Robinson family and their baby boy and bringing him safely into the world. We thank you, oh God. Precious Father, I want to say thank you for keeping Pastor and Roz, as they were away, Lord, and I just pray that you re re rejuvenated their hearts and mind during that time, oh God. Precious Father, I want to th say thank you for man, Lord. Lord, how it blessed my heart, Lord, to see that you brought him on home, Lord. I thank you for being his keeper, oh God. And then, oh God, I want to ask for safe traveling mercies for Fred and Jackie Smith as they travel, oh God. Would you be a hedge of protection around their families, oh God, around their homes in the midst of their absence, oh God. And Lord, I wanted to pray for all of those that are bereaved and heavy hearted. Lord, I look back and saw brother Ronnie Lord and I just ask for him and all of those who may be heavy heavy at heart Lord you are the God of all comfort you are the God who can lift a head you are the God who can mend a heart Lord and we're thankful and Lord I wanted to say thank you for the new members that you are adding to the church Precious Father, Lord, you make it very evident to me all the time, and it's not by might nor by power, but you are moving in this church by your spirit, Lord. I pray that we would continue to surrender ourselves to you, Lord, that you could use us for your glory, O oh God. Show us how to love on and support 
and meet the needs. And your word says to be good to the household of faith. So precious Father, give us a heart like yours that we would be good to one another. And then Lord, I wanna lift up my sister Sherry Brown. Lord, would you continue to touch her foot, Lord, in a special way. Lord, we're so very thankful. So very thankful, God, that you put a hedge of protection around our sister Denise Brown. There is nothing else I could say, Lord, that you were just her keeper in that whole circumstance again. Because it ain't the first time you was her keeper. I thank you, oh God. I thank you, oh God, for putting a hedge around. And then I saw our sister Joyce Collins today, Lord. We just want to say thank you, oh God. And Lord, we just want to continue to lift up uh, Pam Clardy, uh, Brother John Klinkscale. Uh, thank you for um, Kim Harris and her favorable report. Um, she's uh, on vacation now, but she was able to take off that cast and put on a boot and travel, Lord. So would you be a hedge of protection around Kim and her family as they are vacationing? I lift up uh, James Herod Jr. in a special way, Lord. Would you meet him and Sister Louise and Brother Herod at the point of their need as they continually minister to their son? Lord, I just want to Lift up Jennifer Hightower to you in a special way. Thank you for all you've done for her and for Donna and for Judy, Lord. I, I give you the glory, oh God. I lift up Karen Hughes, Lord, to you. Kena Pugh, oh God, when I just think about, when I look at Kena and just her long journey with her health, Lord, I just lift up my hands, oh God, because I know you've been her keeper. Lord, I want to pray for Brother Charles Ronza DeVille as he's healing from that knee replacement, Lord. I pray, oh God, that we will reach out to send him some encouragement. I lift up Gwen Saunders and Donna Wells again in a special way. And then, Lord, last but not least, you said in your word, happy are the feet no you didn't you said beautiful are the feet that share the gospel so lord precious father i thank you that brother kent looking good on the outside but more than that oh god i pray even now that you would fill him with your spirit lord give him power to boldly proclaim the word of god and then upon us lord Give us ears to hear, a heart to receive, and then, Lord, give us application as we leave so we will know how to respond to what we've heard. Lord, you are welcome here. And I don't just mean in the building. You're welcome in, into our hearts, Lord. Continue to mold us because you are the potter. We are the clay. Mold us into the women and men of God and children of God that are going to bring you the most glory. So Lord, have your way. Have your way, Lord. We got a reason to pay, praise you, Lord. I don't need the praise team uh, to pump me up because I'm already pumped and I give you the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Once again, we say good morning. Once again, we want to say thank you, Jesus. The ways that he has blessed us. 
Today in our scripture-led prayer, we will look at Psalm 106. Psalm 106. And the psalmist comes with these words. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Who can speak of the mighty deeds of the Lord, or who can show forth all his praise? How blessed are those who keep justice, who practice righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, in your favor toward your people. Visit me with your salvation, that I might see the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory with your inheritance. We have sinned like our fathers. We have committed iniquity. We have behaved wickedly. Our fathers in Egypt did not understand your wonders. They did not remember your abundant kindness, but rebelled by the sea at the Red Sea. Nevertheless, he saved them for the sake of his name, that he might, that he might make his power known. The psalmist spoke these words, and these words reverberate with us. Let us go before it. Father, once again, we come in the name of Jesus. And again, Lord, we praise, we thank, we worship, and we glorify you. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are worthy for the ways that you have blessed us and you have been with us. Father, it's an old saying, but it's so true. You have been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Lord, continue to move within our hearts and our minds and our spirits. The psalmist said, we want to give thanks to you because you are good. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, because you, you are good. That is by who you are by nature. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you the ways that you've dealt in our lives and you've blessed your loving kindness is everlasting. Lord, at a time when we weren't even looking for you, you were there with your loving kindness, and we thank you for it. And it continues. It goes on. You don't pull it away from us, Lord. It is everlasting. And we thank you for it, Jesus. The psalmist wanted to know who can speak of the mighty deeds of the Lord. Lord, it is hard for us to tell the story of how you've blessed us through the years. Sometimes it's so hard for us to remember how you've blessed us, but Lord, we thank you for things remembered, for things that we don't even remember in the ways that you've blessed us. We thank you, Lord. You've been with us. You've touched us and you've blessed us. The psalmist went on to say that there were times that we did not remember you. Our fathers didn't remember you. Those around us didn't remember you. Our brothers and sisters in the faith didn't remember you. But you remembered us. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for the ways that you've touched us. We thank you for the ways that you have kept us, the ways that you have been with us. We thank you, Lord. It is by your strength and it's by your might. Lord, you saved us. You have blessed us. You have been with us. You have kept us. You have led us. You have shown us the right way. And Father, forgive us for the times that we have been hard-hearted. Forgive us for the times that we have not come and acknowledged what you've done for us. But Lord, right now, we just want to say thank you. Our words sometimes fall so short, but Lord, we just want to say thank you for what you've done. Thank you, Lord, 
for keeping us. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Father, we're praising, we are thanking, we are worshiping you, and we are glorifying you. We're asking that you continue to bless us. Bless us as a body. Bless us as a family, Lord God. But bless us individually. Lord, we know that we are not worthy. But you have blessed us. And we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We thank you. We worship and we glorify you. And we ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, Rising Star. We will bless the Lord this morning at all times. His praise shall continually be in our mouths. It should be in our hearts. We should have a desire to have a lifestyle, to live a lifestyle of worship. A lifestyle of worship. A lifestyle of worship, not just on Sunday mornings, but every day. A lifestyle of worship. Bless the Lord at all times. Everybody. Come on, I will bless. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. Can you turn yes, it up this morning? Yes, yeah. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. Oh, he's good. He's good.
Our Lord and our Savior is ready to receive mm -hmm. everything that you have. Be surrendered to him, trade your sorrow. Amen. Amen. That you have, for everything that he can give you, trade your sorrow.
adoration. We worship you. Hallelujah, the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Lord, you are so good.
Praise God. When will he come through every time? When will he come through every time? When will he come through every time? When will he come through? Oh, 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 every time. Every time I turn around, he's making a way. Woo! Every time I turn around, he's making a way. Every time I turn around, he's making a way. Every time I turn around, he's making a way. Every time, when will he come? Every time, every time, every time, every time I turn around, he's making a way. Woo! Yeah! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Good morning, rising star. When will he come through? Every time. He may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. Glory to God. Glory to God. Good morning, rising star, and to those who are listening in on Facebook. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. I'm so excited uh, about what God is having for us to know this morning and so if you would all stand to your feet as I read from the Word of God if you're able 1st Samuel chapter 17 1st Cha Samuel chapter 17 and verse 26 and it reads then David spoke to the men who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? You may be seated. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Father God, for waking us up this morning. You have started us on this new day, Father God, that we've never seen before. But we pray that you go before us, Father God, and lead our way. We thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. And help us to see what you would have us to learn this morning concerning this text of Scripture. Be glorified, God, in what we say and what we do. And we'll be careful to give you the honor, the glory, and praise that you so rightfully deserve. This is in Jesus' name we do pray and give thanks. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Again, if you would uh, just take a look at the title, The Battle is Not Yours, It's the Lord's. I know Brother Domain spoke of last week, and, and I wasn't familiar with his title, but the Lord doesn't work in coincidences. And I believe his title was called, The Victory is Jesus. And so this is just a continuation. I know he said uh, he'll be bringing a part two, uh, so I think he'll be up next week. But just I just want to mention something real quick. And I know we're all family here, and y'all love me, and I love y'all. But how come the last time when I preached here, nobody told me I was up here looking like Pookie from New Jack City? <laughs> y'all did not tell me my lips look like I've been eating powdered donuts for breakfast. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I thought y'all loved me. I came off this, you know, my son said, Dad, your lips is like, you need to drink some water. I'm like, what? 
people coming up to me saying, hey, you know, praise God for the message. But I was up here looking like Pookie from New Jack City. Lips was all white and crusty. But I love y'all and I thank y'all. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> but I, I got some water here. You know, I, <laughs> I, 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 used, I thought I used some chapstick before I got here. You know, but that's all gone. I had the medicated kind, too. And I, like, oh, my goodness. But praise God, I, I thank you for your love. And, uh, and I also want to say I thank Brother Dane for his comfort to me this morning because he saw that... Uh, I was just filled up, and, uh, but he came over to me and he said, the Lord got you, brother. The Lord got you. And I, that strengthened me, Dane. I'm telling you, I, I really appreciate that. Your heart was there for me, and thank God for you. I really, really, I really appreciate that. And so we'll be reading a, a text of scripture. I just took a part of it uh, to start off, but from uh, first. Samuel chapter 17 starting in verse 20 and there's three things I want us to see this morning through the Word of God by his precious Holy Spirit that God wants us to hear and wants us to know this morning as it relates to this text of Scripture and we're looking back on the journey of David and his life uh, at the beginning of his ministry and his monarchy but after he was anointed it took some time before he became king so he didn't become king immediately but God was always working in the background leading him to that appointment you see who God anoints appoints he anoints and so David was working in that anointment at that particular time but he hadn't reached his kingship just quite yet and so there were some things that God is trying to show him as he was making his way to that point and so the first point I want us to take a look at this morning is David is obedient to his father David is obedient to his father. So we'll look at uh, 1 Samuel 17, chapter, uh, verse 20. And it says, So David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with a keeper, and took the things and went as Jesse had commanded him. So David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper and took the things and went as Jesse, his father, had commanded him. Obedience. That is one of the things that characterizes a believer in God. Obedience. To obey is better than sacrifice, and we always say that, but are we being obedient to the things that God has called us to do? David rose up early, and I don't mean that you always got to get up five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, but David was intentional about what his father had told him to do. You know, he had told him, say, take these loaves of bread to your brothers on the field, and take this cheese and go. He had to go some 25 miles walking. He wasn't with a donkey or anything, but he, he was intentional. He got up. He went early. He didn't say this is somebody else's job to do. He didn't say, you know what, it's too early. I don't feel like going right now. Send somebody else. You know, I had a, I was reading this quote that's a pretty, uh, you know, telling of some of the things that goes on often. And the quote says, that's not my job. It says, there's a story about four people named everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. 
There was an important job to be done, and everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. There may be some things that God has called you to do. There's a lot of things that we need done here at Rising Star Baptist Church, and we thank God for all the bodies that God has had. But Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Jesus was intentional, intention, and, uh, he was very intentional about what he was supposed to do. He said in John 6, in John 6 and 38, I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. I came not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. In John 8, 29, and he, and, and he said, and he who sent me is with me. The father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please him. David was intentional about what his father had asked him to do. He rose up early in the morning and he went to do the things that God had caused him to do, that at, at, at his father had asked him to do. So what is it that God is asking you to do? That you're thinking that maybe somebody else can do it. There's something specially, specifically, that God would have you to do. Are you using your talents, your time, and your treasure for the edification of the body and to glorify God in this part of the vineyard? We can all ask ourselves these questions, but this is some things that I want us to take a look at it as it relates to the life of a believer that obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. He said, because rebellion, as is the sin of divination or witchcraft, are there some things that God is calling you to do that you would say that anybody can do it? It's anybody's job. I, you know, I can't do that. It's not my turn. We can all, we were all saved to be a blessing to the body. God is adding to this body and everyone that that's God adds is not a spare part. You are useful in the kingdom of God, but you gotta obey. You gotta trust and obey. We hear that so often. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. So David was obedient to the commands of his father. And he also, he says, he left the sheep with the keeper and took things and went as Jesse had commanded him. So he didn't just leave the sheep with just anybody. In one text of scripture, it says he left the sheep with another shepherd. So he still was thinking, I need to still be obedient to what my father would have me to do, but I'm just not going to put anybody out there to take care of the sheep. He sent a shepherd. He didn't send a donkey herder. He didn't send a pig watcher. He didn't send somebody who keeps the ships. He sent a shepherd. 
And Jesus said, when I go, I'm going to send another. <laughs> Just like me. I'm going to be, I'm going to send somebody that's going to not speak of their own things, but they will speak of the things of me. He will glorify me. So Jesus, in a way, who is the son of David, but also David's Lord. You know, that's a messianic title that they said about Jesus. Whenever they saw him, you know, there was two blind guys and they, they heard that Jesus was coming. They said, oh, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David. God was already working this thing out before it even got there. Be obedient. There's some things that God would have you to do that nobody else can do. Trust and obey. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit that would lead us and guide us into all truth. He didn't just send anybody. He didn't just send anything. He sent God. He sent the Holy Spirit. And there's no division between the three, they all act as one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There is no jealousy between the Godhead. The Spirit is saying not, you know, wait, I, it, they should be talking about me. I should be lifted up. No, Jesus said when I send the Spirit, he's going to speak of me. And my Father has given everything to me, so the Spirit is going to glorify me. All three working together. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Obedience. That's what David was showing to his father. So David rose up early in the morning. So in verse 21 it says, For Israel and the Philistines had drawn up in battle array, army against army, and David, it says, and David left his supplies in the hand of a supply keeper, ran to the army and came and greeted his brothers. This was still part of David's obedience. His father told him to go check on your brothers. Make sure all your brothers are doing okay. Go down there and find out what is happening. And so David was obedient to what his father would have him to do. So again, that is something in the life of a believer that we should all strive to be. Obedient. Do those things that God called us to do. Because Jesus said, why do you call me Lord and do not the things I say? So be, obedience marks the character of a believer. Then the second thing we want to take a look at is, David is courageous as a covenant son. David is courageous as a covenant son. So it says in verse 23, Then as he talked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines. And he spoke according to the same words, now, again, when Brother Demain was preaching last week, he spoke about how Goliath for 40 days insulted the armies of God. 40 days. he come out every day. Send me somebody to fight. Send me somebody to fight. But now he got the right person listening. So he said... And he spoke according to the same words, so, and it says, so David heard them. Now David heard what he said. Now, David, who was anointed by God, heard what he said. And he said, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled for him and were dreadfully afraid. So they was all scared. Everybody running. 
scared of Goliath. Here's this formidable man with all this armor, this heavy helmet, this uh, javelin, this, um, they said, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels, and a shield bearer went before them. It says, he had a bronze helmet on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. It's reported that Goliath was somewhere around nine point, he was like nine, nine. Nine, nine? And they said the average Israeli at the time was no bigger than maybe five, six, or seven. And Saul might have been one of the tallest because again, that's how they noticed Saul. It's like he's a head and shoulders above the rest of the people. So they thought maybe Saul should have been out there to fight with him. But he was cowering back just like the rest of them. But David said, you know, when uh, all the men were dreadfully afraid, so the men of Israel said, have you come, have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel, and it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich him with great riches, will give him his daughter, and give his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. So now Saul is laying out all this stuff. Say, yeah, you know, instead of him going out to fight, He's like, oh, I'm whoever going to go out and fight him, this is all you're going to get. I'm giving you everything. You're going to be free from taxes. You can live in the king's house. You'll even have the king's daughter. You'll be in the royal family. But then David spoke to the man who stood by him saying, what shall be done for this man who kills this Philistine? and take away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? David is now saying he, as a covenant son, he's saying this Philistine, this uncircumcised Philistine, this pagan is coming against the armies of God? David remembers that he is in covenant with God. God has said in, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, I'll make you the head and not the tail. David is remembering these things. God said, I'll go out and fight your battles for you. While everybody is cowering, falling back, David's saying, no, wait a minute. Who is this person who's going to defy the armies of the living God? David is remembering who he is. He remembers that he has been anointed and appointed by God. You know what? Goliath was in trouble that day. Goliath was in trouble. No matter all this stuff that he had on, he could have drove up in an armored tank. It would have not stopped David because nothing can stop our God. If God is for us, who can be against us? And that's what we have to remember, who we are. And I know the pastor often mentions about the Lion King. Then the father said, remember who you are. Have we forgotten who we are? In Christ Jesus? Have we forgotten? It says that in 1 Peter 1 9, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Goliath was in trouble that day. You see, the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. And God is already working these things out. 
to those who are called and, and, and loved according to his purpose. For all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. God has already worked some things out. We might be facing some things in our lives and feel like it's too much to overcome. This is too much for me. I can't deal with this. It's too much opposition. It's too heavy for me. But God has already went before us. If he's called you to it, he will bring you through it. And we got to know that. If we don't know that, we, we cowering just like Saul and the rest of the men of Israel. God has got our back. And we got to know that for sure. David was courageous. Like God was telling Joshua, only be thou strong and courageous and then you will have good success. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate it on it day and night. We gotta get into the word of God and let the word of God get into us. A lot of us might not know who we are because we don't, we don't read it. It's right here. God has laid it out for us. He promised to fight our battles. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Not your own might. And David, and I don't want to get any Brother Domain's message, but anything could have happened to Goliath that particular day. David didn't need no five stones. Goliath could have tripped on his sword and fell on it. You know, some birds could have flew past him and he stumbled back and fell. It wasn't the stones. It was God. He did it. It was God. Before the foundation of the world, this Goliath was already done. He was already done. Goliath didn't stand a chance that day. And all, all that stuff that he had on, it didn't matter. Our God is an awesome God. And we need to learn to put that in our hearts and know that because we're going to come up against some stuff, y'all. We're going to come up against some stuff that we're going to feel like, I can't, this is too much for me. This is too hard for me. I can't deal with this. I need some help. No wonder David could say, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table in the presence of mine enemies. Everybody's going to see this. Thou anointest my head with oil. Saul so said, I'm going to give you a wife, my daughter. My cup runneth over. This is more than I can, this is more than I deserve. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And he says, I'm going to live with the king. I'm going to be with the king. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. God will fight our battles. Only be still and see the salvation of the Lord. We got to know that God has got our back. David is obedient to his father. David is courageous as a covenant son. He remembered who he is. And that's how we should know who we are in Christ Jesus.
we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. And last but not least, so I'm not going to keep you long today. We're we going to be able to make it in time for a jazz in the park. <laughs> but thank you for the water. <laughs> Woo wee! Yeah, I tell you, y'all love me and I really appreciate it. I do. I love y'all so much. David remains humble by means of the Spirit. David remains humble by means of the Spirit. Here we have in verse 28, because verse 27, it says the people answer him in the same way. So whatever David wanted, you know, uh, that Saul said that he was going to give to the man that killed uh, Goliath. So they all, they just repeated the same things. In verse 28, it says, Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness. He said, I know your pride and your insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, what have I done now? What, what, what did I do now, man? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first ones did also. It is David remains humble by means of the Spirit. Now his brothers were straight up hating on him, just to put it mildly. The one brother, Eliab, he was the oldest. David was the youngest. And Eliab might have been feeling like, well, God didn't choose, you know, Samuel didn't anoint me. God didn't choose me. You know, I was the oldest. I was firstborn. But he chose David. So now, here's his older brother hating on him, saying, why you come down here and you, why you left them little pity sheep, them little phony sheep back at the pasture? Like, what? Why? I mean, why? What, what did I do? I just came down here to see what's going on. The brother's like, nah, you just coming down here to see the battle. You just trying to, you know, put your nose in something you shouldn't be in. But David did not rail back against his brother. He didn't say, you know what, man, what are you talking about? Get out my face. I don't want to hear what you got to say. I'm coming down here because you're all being cowardly and scared anyway. You know, he ain't fired back like that. But the only way that we can be humble is by means of the Spirit. Because there are times when people come against you when you feel like firing back. Oh, Lord, help me to hold my tongue. <laughs> help me to hold my tongue. And y'all y'all know I said this before. Folks like to cut you off in the street and then look at you like you did something wrong. I'm like, are you serious? Wait a minute. Now, I'm, I got the right of way. You run in here, cut me off, and then look at me and want to throw me the finger. Yeah, maybe I am number one, but it ain't. <laughs> they, want to, they want to look at you like you did something wrong. But we need to humble ourselves. It says in James 4.10, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, so that at the proper time, he may exalt you. At the proper time. See, David wasn't king yet. But God had already anointed him for that position and wasn't nothing going to stop it. Nothing at all. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. You know, David 
probably was tempted to say something back. And at, at times we are tempted to say stuff back. We're, we're trying to fight our own battles. But the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. We need to allow God to fight our battles for us. He's better at doing it than us. Vengeance is, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. And seeing God is, is long-suffering, you know, not willing that any should perish. But see, the thing that people don't understand is that they got to die. God doesn't. They have to die one day and stand before a holy, righteous God and give an account for the life that they led. See, God got all the time in the world. I don't. We do not. So it's best to allow God to fight our battles, humble ourselves before him, and in due time, he will lift you up. And you see, Jesus humbled himself. Humbled himself unto death, even death on the cross. But it says in Isaiah 53 and 7, Isaiah 53 and 7, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. But in Philippians chapter 2, in verse 8 and 9, it says, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Then it says, therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of, and of those under the earth and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus is Lord by humbling himself in the sight of the Lord. Those three things that I hope that we all got out of this particular, particular message is the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. David is obedient to his father. We need to learn how to trust and obey. That is the characteristic of a believer. David is courageous as a covenant son. David remembered who he was and this covenant relationship he had with the Father. We also have a covenant relationship. We've been called out of darkness into his marvelous life. We've been a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own. David remains humble by means of the Spirit. That is the lifestyle that we should be striving to, to be, humble. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father God, in the blessed name of your son Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Father God, for this text of scripture that you allow me to read in the hearing of your people, Father God. I pray that your word went forth and accomplished that for what you've sent it. We thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. Help us to be obedient, courageous, and humble as we rely totally on you. Put no confidence in the flesh, but holy trust on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock we stand. 
all other ground is sinking sand. Thank you, Father God, for this day and for this time. In Jesus' most precious name we do pray and give thanks. Amen, amen, amen. If you would all stand for a minute. Hallelujah. There may be somebody here that does not know Jesus as Lord and Savior. They may not know the forgiveness of their sins and the free pardon that God provides through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. There is forgiveness for sin. You don't have to be out here all alone, all by yourself. <clears throat> God is gracious in mercy. And, you know, I, 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 I wanted to mention this, but I thank God for his mercy and grace. But uh, how I looked at how the, his brothers was treating him, I didn't have that particular problem with my brothers you know my brothers who oftentimes would hear that you know I was always this good kid but they never hated on me because of that they loved me and pushed me towards being the person that God would have me to be and my one brother <laughs> my brother over here you know, I remember a uh, time, my brother Mick, he, uh, there was a time my mother didn't have enough money to buy us things, and it was school time, and he told my mother, don't buy him anything, but make sure that, that I had something. <laughs> and I never want to forget that, and I always thank him for that now to this day, and I love him with all my heart and my brother is going blind <laughs> but he never was bitter about the whole situation and he had a daughter that was murdered <laughs> and I know it hurt him very much and it hurt us all but he thanks God to this day for allowing him to be a part of their lives for so long he was missing from their lives and God used him and brought him back into their lives but now and, but I thank God for him and again if y'all see him stumbling if he step on your foot you know he ain't doing it on purpose you know, and he'll, he'll tell you about it. Thank you. And uh, if you see him stumbling, if he walk into the wall and say, excuse me, he might think he's running into somebody. He can't see, but I love him. And, and I'm always going to be there for him as long as I can. But I just thank God for this church. And again, there may be some who might want to join this church and be a part of this fellowship. Again, there's things that God will want you to be a part of and let your talent be used here to glorify him and grow this particular body here at Rising Star Baptist Church. There might be those who want to join this church, but our counselors will be waiting in the back. And so we would love to have you. But again, we emphasize that Jesus is Lord. And Jesus, the death, the burial, and the resurrection, it's the gospel that still saves. It's the power of God unto salvation. And it's still, the blood still works. So thank you. Thank you. You might be, you may be seated. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We can just have just one moment. I'm going to ask if Laura... Boom Hauer, and she will come forward. And amen. <laughs> Laura's from the Joni Abdul um, Breast Cancer Center. 
Dr. Ruth Quarles, as well as Vivian Powers have been working with her. And so I'm going to allow her a few minutes to explain what we're going to do um, on next week. The f August 6th. August 6th. So I'll give you, give you the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here today. Um, as Reverend said, I'm with the Joni Abdu Breast Care Center in Mercy Health. And the Joni Abdu Breast Care Center was named after Joni Abdu. It was Dr. Abdu's wife who passed away from breast cancer. She had a very aggressive form of breast cancer. And at that time, she was, there was nothing in our area, in the Mahoning Valley, that had a comprehensive comprehensive breast care center where you could get your mammogram, you could see a doctor, you can have surgery. And it was her dying wish that Dr. Abdu build a facility so that someone can be taken care of all the way through. And that's what he did. And he has a huge passion to help the woman in our valley. And his latest passion, he's, he's concerned that there's a lot of African American women who are not getting their mammograms. He's had a few come to him with stage three and four. And in his vision, no woman should ever come to us with a, three, a stage three or four breast cancer. He, would, he wants us to get out and get into the valley so that we can get women to come in. We can catch their cancer at stage one and two where it's treatable and 99% survival rate. So I'm here today because we're going to be back here on August 6th with our van and we're going to be doing mammograms. So after I leave here, um, I'm going to be sitting in the back. If you'd, you're due for your mammogram or you haven't had one for a long time, please come back and sign up. And do not worry if you don't have insurance or if you have a high deductible because we have pr uh, the Panerathon, which everybody's probably heard of. We raise money every year so that you, we, you can't say I can't have a mammogram because I don't have insurance or I can't afford it because we're going to pay for it for you. So please come back and help us do that. And also, since I'm here, I just want to give another little plug. We're going to be doing prostate checks, uh, blood work, at the African American Male Wellness Walk on August 5th. So please come down to the Cavelli. It's free. There's no charge for that whatsoever. We don't bill your insurance, nothing. We do it all for free, and we, do, we have a really nice turnout. So please come down. And, guys, you got to get that checked, too, because it's also 99% curable as well. So... Thank you so much for having me today. I'll meet you in the back, and please come and sign up. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's stand together. Let's all stand, and let's spread the word. Listen, let's not let them come and we get one or two people. Spread the word. I believe you have to be uh, 40 years old or older for, um, for the test. So this is not just for Rising Star. This is for our community as a whole. If you have not had a mammogram, please let your friends, your family, let them know. They'll have a van here on the 6th. And um, of course, it is secure, and you don't have to worry about any of that. And so um, it'll be done professionally. Uh, Mr. Abdul, I was speaking at a commencement service, and he sat next to me, and we started talking. And, and so from that conversation, we, we want to really make a difference. Uh, in the lives of particularly the African-American community who are suffering from cancer at higher rates. And so let's, let's make this a success. Amen? Well, Father, we... Um, I can't read that. Okay, we have a pink sheet of paper that's in a bulletin. Please share it. Yes, please share that with others and we look forward to a great event on the 6th. Amen? Well, Father, we do thank you for what you've done and what you're doing in the life of this church. And we are grateful for the reminder that the battle is not ours. It is the Lord's. And so, God, as we leave this place, we know that there will be Goliaths out there. And they will be taunting their their, their, their force and their power and their word, but greater is he who is within us than he who is in the world. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in the life of Rising Star. Bless us and keep us as we go our separate ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let's welcome all of our guests and have a good day.